I'm very proud to tell my story here. Uh, I am a composer and an academic teacher of music, and, but I'm also a musician. This is uh, important, maybe you know. It's not so common among contemporary composers to be also a musician. Uh, you know, in music we have still this uh, romantic perspective on creation, this very irrational process and so on. Uh, this is definitely uh, what my talk is not going to be here about. Uh, so, um, I was always interested how this whole thing works. So, at first I approached it through the evolutionary and cognitive psychology. I would also go into neuroscience if I only had fMRI stuff in my lab, which is, of course, impossible. So, then I proceeded with so-called artificial intelligence uh, information processing uh, techniques. Uh, you might only imagine how disgusted my colleagues are when I talk, for example, about Chopin in terms of artificial neural networks. networks. Uh, however, I noticed that whatever technique you use, you gain an acceptance and understanding once you've shown a true advantage uh, and true lessons derived from this technique. So for today, I've chosen my favorite uh, genetic algorithms from which even artists can learn a lot. Why? Because today we live in a particular moment of uh, paradigm change in science. Uh, the previous century was the age of computation and informatics. The our century uh, most probably will be the age of uh, biology. The computational models will be replaced by their um, real hardware organic implementations, most probably. This is the future, but even today we notice um, particular change, biological change in the computer science, plenty of methods inspired by biology, including my favorite, my beloved, genetic algorithms. This kind of algorithm is very useful in any kind of design, graphic design, whatever, it, just if, to highlight a few examples. Uh, musical composition, musical improvisation and orchestration, very concrete examples. Uh, there is a name given to this approach, uh, the meta-creation. Uh, you might want to read about it, for example, in a book written by Mitchell Whitelow. So how to experiment at home with evolution? First, we must realize that any organism exists in two states, encoded as a DNA sequence, for example, and decoded as a particular creature with its physical properties. Also, music can be uh, encoded as any kind of formula and decoded as a physical sound. Uh, for example, traditional musical score is a kind of code. Uh, for my own purpose, I use my own, uh, I represent musical parameters like tempo, rhythm, volume, for example, as curves or trends, because I suppose, in my opinion, this is how we hear the music. Uh, we observe long-term processes rather than particular notes. So, for example, these are two uh, curves, tempo and register curve. I think both are intelligible in this uh, short sound example. This is a tempo curve, and the register goes up. Yeah. So the curve coefficients can be represented in binary. This is a phenotype. This is way of coding is very efficient, because uh, just a few numbers is enough to generate hundreds of nodes, like in this charming example. Uh, so the curve coefficient can be represented in binary as a kind of chromosome. There is no evolution without modifications. So the chromosomes perform mutation, random mutation, or get some pleasure performing a crossover uh, with another individual. So now we are ready to, get, uh, to take any programming language and create a simple homemade model of the evolution. So the population of the individuals uh, becomes a set of musical ideas. The fitness is tested in the environment. Uh, in music, the audience performs aesthetic valuation of the particular idea. If the fitness is low, the genes die. Uh, otherwise, the genotype replicates and the whole cycle, evolutionary cycle, repeats. In music, we would rather say about the combination and transformation of ideas. This is how parents create offspring and uh, the next generation of individuals appears. So, uh, simple example, this is a shortcut. Uh, uh, prepared uh, from different stages of the, of the working of the algorithm to give you just sense how the music evolves. At the very beginning, the sound is really like, uh, pretty like contemporary music. Uh, unshaped mass of sound evolves from generation to generation. And this is not defined now. Suddenly some rhythmic patterns appear and so some harmony appears. Finally, the music emerges, music becomes. This is a kind of online evolution. Um, this is 
a very simple example. Now we are able to compose very long-term processes with use of such similar technique. So um, mm, this process is interesting as it is, but one can say, if you can, you do. If you can't, you write the program. Yes, but of course, such a music could be composed manually, but there would be no lesson and no fun, of course. So, what can genetic algorithms teach us? This is the happy result, the final phenotype of, of what you have just heard. So, what can genetic algorithms teach us? First, we learn about the power of behind power behind populations of uh, small agents. Uh, by the way, today in China, there are 50 million people studying the piano. 50 million. Uh, someday, of course, uh, one of those guys must win a shopping competition. This is a case of statistics, simple statistics. Uh, so uh, the power comes from searching for solutions in many different places simultaneously. Let's imagine the space of all possible solutions as a kind of map. Uh, the individual stroll through this map. There are places of different fitness level. We, in terms of optimization, we say about the local and global optimum. Uh, so the, the case, the point is here that there are some good solutions, temporarily sufficient uh, locally, but there are somewhere, there are better words, the global solutions. We shouldn't forget about it. Uh, while the genetic algorithm works, uh, we might observe tendency to create clusters of similar solutions. This resembles the uniforming role of the tradition in culture. Uh, traditional solutions, you know, are good uh, locally, temporarily, but they are not always the best solutions. So, uh, but they are very good as a starting point for further searching. To transgress the tradition, we must push the individuals out of clusters and spread them away uh, across the space. Then is a better chance that some heroic individual we found, uh, will find a better solution and the others will follow him or her. Uh, so very important rule and very important lesson. Uh, need for diversity. Any improvement in population is uh, possible only by preserving diversity. This one might call it kid rule, kid different. Uh, algorithm works for a few minutes, and we observe it, its performance online. Yeah, uh, with keeping fingers in front of the screen, and sometimes it seems that the population is too invariable, too invariable, and the algorithm is going to get stuck. But suddenly, some crazy mutation appears, and better solution emerges. The leader spreads its genes across the population, and all happy together go to the higher level of evolution, transposed to the higher level of evolution. So the next lesson would be that evolution follows successful, effective revolutions. Uh, the heart of the algorithm is the fitness measure module here. Uh, this is a crucial point because the life or death decision is made here. So uh, the next lesson would be that the environment is at least a co-author of the artwork. This may bother some of you, especially if you are artists. Yeah? But what it's indeed is the environment here? This can be a listener or the audience in general or an analytical tool. We can try to formalize our taste or taste of the population and compose uh, people-shaped music uh, or um, get some popular appeal and compose hits, hundreds of hits uh, per minute. This is the future, but also to give you a sense of the future. I'm working now on the EEG system uh, for composing music online with use of brain activity only. This will be the, the module of uh, estimation, aesthetic, uh, aesthetical estimation. So anyway, in all these examples, computer can only module, uh, emulate human-defined aesthetic criteria only. So we shouldn't expect from computer to create any, anything new because it does, doesn't have body, doesn't have emotion, needs, uh, intentions and ambitions. Uh, maybe in the future we'll be able also to program these aspects, but for now it's, it's uh, not possible. Uh, so back to the main question. Do the artists try to fit the environment? Uh, in our simplified model, the environment was static. But in real life, you know, it's of course dynamic. And of course, artists influence and change the environment. So it's enough to recall here the name of Ludwig van Beethoven or the Beatles or other revolutionists here. So this is the chance for artists to set them free, themselves free out of the environmental pressure. Uh, so this is not ho so hopeless, but this is very, very difficult to be at the same time 
original and communicative and convincing. So final remark will be that there is always kind of pragma behind aesthetic experience. Uh, artwork must be at the same time emotionally touching us, but also should uh, show, should, should learn us about the alternative ways uh, of looking at, uh, at the world around us. This is the pragma I'm talking about. Uh, so, summing up, I've been dealing with uh, artificial intelligence in music for uh, about 10 years, and at the beginning I, have to faced, I had to face a bit of distrust from my colleagues. You know, when everybody around is telling about insight, illumination, inspiration, I, I really don't know why all those words begin with I. Uh, so, uh, but finally, I convinced my colleagues that this way uh, we can learn something interesting about the culture. So finally, the technology like genetic algorithms, for example, is a way of discovering the world, not the goal itself. It's not the goal to compose such a music. It's, uh, the goal is how, to, how it becomes, how such a music becomes, how it's possible. So uh, whatever technology you use, uh, it's always think about how did, how did it change you, uh, what did you learn from it, or how would it be without technology? Thank you, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>